up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG. Damn, some days are good. You guys know me. I don't get a chance always to return to play DLC for a game. I just don't have the time. And sometimes a good game is, I think, best constrained as it is and not actually extended out with some DLC. I watched Chariots of Fire the first time. It doesn't friggin' mean I want to repeat it. Unless, of course, it's Ghost of Shishima and Ghost of Shishima Legends. Let's do this. Subscribe if you like the video. I would love for you to do it. I think we can all agree... I liked Ghost of Shishima. I didn't say we all liked it because each to their own, but by the time I was done, my Ghost Jin was just a badass when he flirted his four play with six play. So returning to the game and in multiplayer fashion was just like many of our mothers, a sure thing. But what is it? Well, when you jump into Legends, it's a wicker work of story-based missions that up to two players can walk through. Various unlockable difficulties with commensurate commodities coughed out at the end windscreen are also delivered to you as you level up. However, you also have four player survival matches, each based in large locations separated by horizontal and vertical hazards that see you just hopscotch in between spots to fend off waves of enemies incoming with your friends or some randoms. Let me describe to you just how quickly I knew Legends was something special. It was the very first survival mission I did with friends, telling them, yo man, I got the beach. And that was followed moments later by me yelling, yo man, I for sure do not have the beach. And suddenly icons from the other area started towards me. And that feeling of holding the line and changing my strategy from one of dealing death to don't die right now, you dilettante. You need to dig in and dodge and duck and dive until your friends show up was profound. And I did it. Something that while Ghost was awesome in its own right as a solitary and single player experience, it could never really show like Legends can. I watched my team use shortcuts, the grapple hook and solid platforming to get to me, leaping into the fray as I staggered an enemy with a perfect parry, his sword bounced off and up, and before I could finish him off, out of fucking nowhere comes some screaming samurai to gut him, and of course, that was one of the people I was playing with. That's Ghost of Shishima's single player meted out into multiplayer perfectly, and that's why Legends works so friggin' well. But it's not the only thing. Let's talk a little bit about the story, which I found interesting and something I did not expect to actually see in addition to what I got with Legends. This is a series of dark tales that embrace the hellish parts of the mysterious and mythological ancient Japan, far more than the original game did. Expect to see levels meted out with an abundance a ghost like cherry blossoms floating in the air or the poetry of the deceased almost choking the landscape as you flit in and out and across a spirit world as the game's narrative tells an ancient tale of well pretty much despair and terrible stuff these side missions can have everything from mini bosses to you protecting different villagers it really does feel like an extension of the original game I was actually really disappointed to see the raid mode not be added right away, but that's just the way it goes. It's a free update. What can you say? That's coming at a later time. Now, jumping in is pretty easy. You pick one class to start off with, and you level that class character up with different items that you win, which sort of add into your overall level score. And as you go up in levels, you unlock other classes. And of course, those classes include the ever-solid Samurai. Now, in the multiplayer mode, Samurai are up close and personal, and not a lot of finesse, but a whole lot of fuck used to enemies, like their swords are made of middle fingers of dead creatures they killed and were just too bored to wipe off the blade. When they build up resolve for killing enemies, they turn into a friggin' killing machine. They're like, dead, 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 then pause for a second, dead, 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 dead. If you consider a base starting class, it would be your Samurai. Next up, Assassins. That's my baby. And they're pretty much exactly what they sound like. With the resolve ability to go into the shadows and chain together kills with one of their special moves, it feels like a high-level Assassin's play is watching an anime represent their best fighter, but at like 9 frames per second with just the guttings, cuttings, and denuttings being shown. Then there's the Hunter, the Bowman, a little bit more of a difficult character. Normally, this is a character you think wouldn't be that fun to play in a group setting like this, but where the Bowman forgoes a bit of that up close and personal, they absolutely dirt nap enemies if you're good with them, even though aiming can be a bit difficult. Doling out for a great deal of daily dose of death by headshotting enraged enemies and using that verticality in the levels allows for this character to feel more useful than I think a lot of people would initially think. Also, this is built directly into every single location in Ghost of Tsushima for its benefit and a little disgust but insanely useful tactic, which is stuttering enemies with shots so that other people can attack them more quickly, works really well. Lastly is the Ronin, healer extraordinary, plenty potentiary who can lay down some wild ass killing moves, then straight up lay hands on the team like a homicidal paladine. That guy I have not really got a ton of time with, but a number of people I've talked to 
really like their gameplay. Now, each of the classes has abilities they unlock as they level up, and you can choose one ability per pair as you go down a tree. For example, you may have to choose between sprinting being totally silent or your assassinations being animated faster, which I have to say is a damned godsend. Pick that one. Each class also has enough that with even four players all playing the same character, for example, for Samurai, for the most part, that felt very different. Ghost of Tsushima never was much for hiding exactly what it was, and Legends doesn't either. You have the up the four-player co-op and survival, coming later the raid-style missions, as well as the two players in the story-based challenges that dive deep into that magic and myth of Japanese mayhem, if that myth was basically told by Clive Barker. That's also reflected out in the graphics of the title. Trust me, pretty soon you're working your way through this story of blood-sucking, twin-killing murderers and magic-using Onai, keeping enemies alive by basically showering them with an ambulance full of AB positive while you fight, requiring you to work through the other characters and take out the healers just to do any damage to those people remaining. Graphically, it's an impressive changeup from the more realistic of the original single player sections now to the far more mystical parts that we see here. All of this story is narrated by Greg Baldwin, doing his best impersonation of scary old dude, telling you the tales as you go. His voice is ever present, and it's a feature in the co-op system explaining the story, the checkpoints, and telling it all as it occurs, like a well-remembered but possibly a little bit of a lie when it comes to the myth, and I, I like that. One of the main strengths, though, is the simplicity in delivering information that you get in a multiplayer mode that Ghost of Tsushima does. As gamers are more savvy now in games, many of us understand what items or skills are needed, but it can still be difficult for people jumping in, understanding exactly what requirements they actually need. It reads a little bit like a stone Christopher Lambert reading a poem in reverse to tell you what you have to do. There's been a couple games I've jumped into even recently where I'm reading the requirements and I'm like, the fuck? Walk the beaches of Loch Lomond and then turn left at the brambles that do not stick. Pet the dog three times and the horn of Hamash shall be passed down by the toe-headed father. And you're like, what the hell? Not here. Due to Legend's tighter construction and set of gameplay mechanics, all of the highlighted armor pieces and items, you pretty much just know what you need to do. Boom, there it is. Very simple, and whatever you need to do isn't locked away like some games where it just says, finish a quest and it's hidden, and there's a secret thing that may do something. That occurs occasionally here, but there's more than enough that actually shows you what you need to do that you can move forward. For example, at any time, you can look at your feats section, which lists class and legends and raid feats and what you need to do and how far you are when it comes to what you need to do to get whatever item. Armor and sword kits and helmets are all unlocked in these ways, and you can see how each will affect your overall look. But remember, no statistics here are actually adjusted. This is cosmetic. Now, if you dive into the weapons section, however, now you're cooking with fire. Swords of various elements have random bonuses. You may have a sword of water that lets you change stance, but also gives you a different combo than you expected and hits stronger against shieldmen. Swords, you can light on fire. Others that not only have a chance of poisoning enemies, but also take out brutes with lickety split timing. And same goes for the various sub weapons, as well as blow guns and bows and caltrops, smoke bombs. Many of the higher ones carry an assortment of status effects and items can also be shared between classes, but not armor. So while you can dismantle items to get money to re-roll the daily challenges as well as get items to craft and modify stuff. Do not hammer that destruction button as each item feeds into your total level score, which is also a decider for what difficulties you can choose on the various missions. So if you unlock one of the new classes, you may want to throw some of those better items you have that you aren't using onto those characters. Don't just destroy them. You can also modify those items, and the game informs you overall of what the possible outcomes will be, and delightfully, in some cases, lets you choose to keep the old status effect. It's just enough to allow for a ton of builds without being confusing to newcomers, as well as more experienced players. The first time you realize that dropping caltrops to slow enemies and poison them works perfect in conjunction with your sword that you can also light on fire, but usually doesn't last long enough to get that many enemies, now works in complete tandem with one another, or you find out that combined with that realization, switching out your bow that staggers enemies for a blowgun that poisons them can turn you into a crowd control machine, even if that was not your original plan. Every single character seems to have that moment where they can be the hero, or that first time you're engaged hot and heavy with a brute and he's deflecting your attacks. You're now on fire, more enemies are coming, and then an assassin leaps off the rocks above you and assassinates the brute in front of your eyes. Kill steal? Sure, maybe. One of the coolest moments in free or even paid DLC in a while, for sure. 
And while everyone can heal anyone else who's fallen with a nice colorful icon indicating your own dishonor when you're the dude just dragging your nuts through the dirt hoping someone helps you, its timing is just fast enough to feel ultimately fair, but the game's speed is just fast enough to make it feel hazardous to your health without checking before you do so. This results in some amazing teamwork where one fighter's down and with emotes and just voice prompts, I have seen an assassin drop down, use his hard-earned special to take out four brutes with giant hammers, while another one drops smoke bombs so that all the remaining enemies are blind, pass up the assassinations he could do just to go in and heal you. It's moments like that where everything comes together that it feels like you're playing a Ghost of Tsushima versus the friggin' Matrix. Let me tell you though, it can also go horribly wrong and there are some issues here. Legend still has some wonky issues when it comes to aiming and that can get a little bit weird when verticality is brought in. Leaping onto a rope can result in you falling down to the ground below you as if you were testing some new theory of gravity versus wanting to get on the damn thing. Also, I would have certainly loved to have seen two more difficulty options in the story levels between bronze difficulty and silver. That jump between bronze and silver and to gold and beyond is massive. It doesn't necessarily stymie you or stop you, but it can certainly feel a little bit on the enemy side. Also, I had a frustrating number of network errors while playing this. I thought it was my machine or my system, but talking to other players, this seems rampant, especially in Legends. And only happens when I'm in this game. And I'm not sure why, but the error comes up and it can be cleared and it never actually kicks you from the game. I never got kicked from a game ever. That error requires a button prompt to authorize. And that sucks when you're the last samurai standing, your friends are laying around you like a bunch of armored hobos waiting for a life handout. And you're basically in your network settings going, accept, accept, accept. Level-wise, the game has a number of survival-style levels that are mostly camps or towns with setups with enemies coming in waves of ever-growing furiosity, and their incoming locations are always hinted at by fireworks near the spot that they're going to come to. However, and this is a godsend, the game doesn't just spawn people in the locations when they come in. Instead, enemies head towards spots that you have to defend, meaning a well-placed player can intercept the incoming troops and thin them out a bit, feeding you the rest in a more digestible form. If the genius of Ghost was in the simplicity of systems originally portrayed, obfuscating a bit more detailed body of customization, then the mastery of the multiplayer is how you communicate to everyone. Pinging is here easily. Just hammer a button to warn others of an attack or a person you want to attack or incoming locations of enemies. The few emotes and voice commands here are just clear enough that whether you're working with friends that you've known since the Legend of Cage days or an almost naked random with the user named ChuggerLoveHandle69 and he just stepped in, you can actually always figure out what everybody means or says. The levels, the communication, the emotes, they all offer just enough to let you quickly work out what anyone is saying or doing. You know, free DLC isn't unheard of. It's rare enough, though, especially when it adds this much to a title that's worth discussing and doing a review for, even though it's not necessarily a review because it's free. Legends is phenomenal, even with some of its clunky bits that stick to it, like the remains of an enemy after you sliced them apart. But it's the teamwork and the precision, and it's blanketed over the top of what originally looked like a basic mode, but spans out into the discussion of levels and shortcuts and tricks to move between spots the quickest, all while you're actually playing, all backed up by the ghost's almost rock-solid mechanics that we see from the single player. It's tension, holding off an entire wave, calculating the odds of timing a heal between cutting down some caterwauling bad guy who's bearing down on you, all the while your friends are trying to run to give you some aid. So, I'm not going to rate this. It's fantastic. It's free. Go check it out. Ghost of Shishima is awesome. You should check that out as well. If you like these videos, give it a thumbs up, thumbs down, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. If you like it, check me out on Reddit and Facebook and Twitter, and you can always become a patron on the Patreon website. It helps me give you guys content like this, content even on free stuff to see if it's even worth your download. Or maybe you were thinking about purchasing Ghost of Tsushima in the first place, because strangely enough, a lot of people pretend that everybody owns Ghost of Tsushima and I actually have more friends who don't own it. This is one other reason that maybe you could step in. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.